I'm Sam and this is the Storybook Knitter podcast, not Nays Knits. I've changed the name. If you are new here, welcome. Uh, welcome back. Sorry for the confusion with the name change, but I'll go more into that later. Uh, yep, yeah, so this is a disabled inclusive podcast where we talk about all things yarny. Um, I am not a beginner. I'm more of an advanced beginner now, probably heading towards more advanced because of the amount of knitting I'm doing. But uh, I've been knitting for about 10 months and uh, yeah, I'm dipping my toes into cabling, colour work at the moment and all those fun things. Um, my last podcast was at a summer wool festival. So if you like uh, yarn and yarn purchases, definitely check that out. It's a two-parter. I, I do apologise. I got a new phone because I wanted better uh, quality and uh, my uh, laptop didn't like the new phone and would only do it in um, extreme good quality but we weren't aware of that when we downloaded it to YouTube it was only when YouTube like came up and someone very kindly in the comments said this is only half a video where's your purchases um, I was like oh no so then hence the second part yeah so it turned out that laptop didn't like the phone so Fingers crossed the laptop's going to like the phone this time because we know what to do. But if it doesn't, please let me know in the comments. <laughs> I try and improve and then technology just kicks you in the butt, doesn't it? Never mind. Never mind. So, yeah. Uh, name change. The name change. Okay. Why have I changed the name? So, to start off, I haven't been doing this podcast that long. April I started, I think, just before my operation. So end of March, end of March. And um, it's one of those things I've been thinking about for a little while. Wasn't sure how I was going to do it. Didn't know if I should do it because I was a beginner knitter. And then I was like, well, there's other beginner knitters out there that are going to want to, you know, follow along. And are a little bit more intimidated by the experienced knitting podcasts. And so I thought there was a little bit of a, a reason to exist in the knitting world there. Um, but then... I wasn't sure what name and I kind of rushed it to be honest it was it's inspired by my local area and the, there's nothing wrong with the name but it just didn't feel me um, and it didn't really cover what I wanted to incorporate into the channel so as I've gone further along with the podcast and found my voice and found my interests in yarn and learned a bit more about the community and what I love about the community um, the name just didn't fit and it was sitting uncomfortably with me and I've been I've been ruminating around it for about two months now I was like what should I change it to and then it just came to me storybook knitter and I thought perfect perfect because I absolutely adore books I love books in yarn you know and I love movies which are stories in themselves and tv and just all my loves even video games are stories so I thought it just incorporated all my loves and uh yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping that you can see that vibe too and it's not too jarring for you and don't worry, it's not going to become heavily book themed. I'm not going to do like book reviews and things like that on here. It is literally me talking about my knitting and sometimes it's inspired by books or TV or movies or video games and things like that. So it's not heavily themed. Do not panic. Um, you're probably wondering why am I not sitting in front of a load of books, a nice library and stuff. Um, if you're new to this channel, uh, I recently had my, um, not going to name them, I recently had a family member move in uh, after my operation. Um, you know, they're not going to be here forever. They're, no, that sounds really bad. They're only going to be here for another couple of months and then they're moving back to their home. So where I keep all my books you'll probably see from previous podcasts I had beautiful wallpaper and nice things that would be my living room and they're currently living in my living room so once they move out I'll go back into my living room and I'll be surrounded by my, all my beautiful books and my beautiful wallpaper and I won't be in the guest bedroom <laughs> which is currently my living room because this is my sofa <laughs> it's confusing don't worry about it you don't need to think about it I'm thinking about it because I'm thinking about my beautiful background and everything like that. But this is beautiful as well, so I don't know why I'm... Mm, don't ignore me. Anyway, so that's why I've had the name change. Yeah. 
Okay, so, right. I have finished objects. Yes, more than one. Don't fall over. I haven't done a podcast in a little while, so I've been knitting. Uh, if you don't follow me on Instagram, I have been keeping the community updated. I, I'm, I'm one of those lucky people that have uh, chronic illnesses and uh, ailments that like to tag team. So when one finishes, the other one goes, ah, it's my turn. And yeah, so I've been in a bit of a, you don't need to worry about it. I'm coming out the end of it now, touch wood, <laughs> but you know, what can you do? So I'm here, you know, I'm here. So it's all good. So finish objects. You probably saw this one on the last, last podcast, the Summer Wall Festival. I'm not going to put it on now because one, I've not thought this through and I haven't put something on that I can wear over it. I could, but it would look a bit ridiculous, I think. And two, you saw it on the podcast, uh, the Summer Wall Festival podcast. Oh, God. Uh, so. Here she is. She is a star. She's cropped because I thought of wearing her as an uh, under, under vest thing when the weather gets cold. But I thought for the Summer Wall Festival, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show her off. So this is the Strata Vest. Sorry, I'll stop wiggling around now. It's been a little while, I need to find my plo. Uh, this is the Strata Vest. Absolutely gorgeous yarn by Magical, Magical Yarns. It is called Ocean Spray. There's a little bit of pooling, but I'm really enjoying that. I think it works really nicely. Um, and it reminds me of what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be the ocean. It looks a little bit like the sunset on the ocean. Love it. Um, this yarn is so soft, so soft. Oh my goodness. I'm really glad I've got this when the weather gets cold because oh, she's going to get worn lot. But I could wear it under this and stuff, you know. So it's soft enough next to skin that you can wear as a vest, not just a, a jumpery vest. So I'm really happy. Uh, I did the strata again. I have done the strata before. I love this pattern. I love this pattern so much. So much. Um, so I could elongate it if I wanted to, but I only had one skein. So this is one skein. What size did I do it in? Did I do it in size two or three? I cannot remember. I did not write it down. That's really clever of me. I don't have the pattern here. Uh, I will put it in the notes, but yeah. So, but like I said, it's cropped, so it doesn't take that much yarn. Um, really, really lovely, easy pattern to follow. I did the ribbing this time. I didn't do the ribbing last time and I really like the result. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, again, easy to do. I need to block it, hence why it's doing this kind of thing, but you know. Someone needs to buy some blocking stuff and some wool soap and she hasn't got around to it yet. <laughs> but yeah, found it really comfortable to wear, fitted really beautifully, got a few compliments, which you always like, you know. Um, but yeah, really happy with that. I brought some more magical yarn because at the Summer Wool Festival, purely because I love knitting with it. It is really gentle on the hands, feels beautiful, um, really good quality merino. So very happy with that v-neck you know perfect perfect um i'd probably knit quite a few more of these because it's just a really nice easy knit once you get to the to the v it's just stocking it and you know it's really easy increases it's easy to remember easy 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 so yeah i might knit another one maybe with a magical yarn i don't know we'll see Okay, so next one, next one, next finish item. I did it again. I'm sorry, I've really got to stop keeping my socks this way. Oh, they're so crinkly. I've been wearing them, not gonna lie. I've knitted some more vanilla socks. And I used my gloom because I was looking at my gloom and I was like, I really want, I need you in something. On, <laughs> I need you on my feet. <laughs> oh gosh. 
Um, it needs blocking because if you didn't know, I was knitting the Ripple Vest by Jessie May Designs and I learned that pure ribbing is not for me. It was not for my comfort. <laughs> so it was a bit wiggly wiggly, the yarn, and you can tell that, but hopefully with blocking or wearing, but it's socks, so I'm not that bothered. So I have some globe socks. So these tag team, if these aren't on my feet, the other vanilla socks are on my feet. Um, they're just the comfortablest cloud-like. Are they actually on my feet socks that I've ever owned? And I've got my mum into sock knitting now because I was just like, you need to you need to do socks. And uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with these ones as well. I've actually knitted them quite well. <laughs> I say so myself apart from the wiggly jigglies you know like the the increases are good you know the the heel is good I'm happy with it um yeah so if you haven't treated yourself to some alpaca cashmere silk concoction one to be honest again it was like just over half a skein I used I need to weigh them but I probably could get another short pair of socks out of one skein. So one skein, yeah, it's a bit spendy, but you could get two socks out of it. It's all right. It's all right. So you can get yourself some luxury socks with not the luxury price. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, yeah. So I'm already got another vanilla pair of socks on the on the needles. They seem to be constantly on my needles. Um, if you're not aware, again, if you haven't watched my podcast before. Uh, I started off knitting the four ply vanilla by the crazy sock lady and then I knitted my husband a DK pair again he doesn't take them off he loves them he keeps asking me to make him more and then I made these ones and now I'm making a Christmas present I'm not going to show you it because I don't want to give the game away but I want to show you it because it's so beautiful but the, if you watched my last podcast, sorry, I keep saying this, but I'm using the yarn from my last podcast haul. Um, so the sock set from the William Morris, I've started using that and it fades beautifully, beautifully. Uh, that's a bit... What can I show you? What can I show you? What have I got here? Uh, so this is some of it. But it's inspired by the honeysuckle print. And oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, the knitting shed are magicians when it comes to yarn dyeing. <laughs> I'm just going to put that out there. But that's so lovely, people. So, yeah. Uh, oh, this is something I didn't show. Have I got the thing in it? Oh, no. Oh, it's got a label, luckily. So, I got this little bag at the yarn festival. I didn't show this. Um, sorry, I'm doing an acquisition. But this is uh, a very important public announcement, especially if you use a wheelchair. So perfect size to put on your seat if you use a wheelchair and also this poppers as well so it poppers around the arm of your wheelchair or even your armchair if you're using an armchair or if you're at the pub and you want to do some knitting you've got perfect uh, so it holds on also it's got I'll try and show you not the project it's got some pockets in there for your little uh, notions and stuff and also it's great for socks great size for socks probably like a little vest as well uh, and it's by oh i'm talking really fast again pickle lily make it and they've got like a little cat symbol I'll, I'll i'll find them on the internet and i'll tag them down below but yeah really really cute and lots of different designs loads of different um needle holders and things like that uh, if i hadn't recently brought a needle holder i would have brought a needle holder too but yeah really happy with that and i got sheeps because they're so cute they remind me of the lakeland sheeps so i got that okay not many acquisitions today just to warn you i apologize um why am i lying i've got i've got i've got something I've got something you can probably see it there actually <laughs> but i didn't buy it so you know 
Oh, I can show you some more yarn from, from the William Morris, oh my God, all over the place, sorry. So this is more yarn from the William Morris sock set that I'm making and yeah. Yes, indeed, it is beautiful. Okay, so what's next? Shall we do whips? Let's do some whips. Okay. Where shall I start? Shall I start with new whips or, or currently ongoing whips? Let's do some Golden Hall first, shall we? I, I'm really enjoying Golden Hall at the moment. Last day and a half I've been knitting my golden haul again. I got myself in a funk again with it. Not because of the pattern, it's because of my brain. I'm overthinking it. And then I overthink the mistake so much that I stop knitting it. And I don't know why I'm doing it. I don't know why I'm doing it. I am ridiculous, ridiculous. And I spoke to Nicole about it and she was just like, you know, my, my husband's grandma, says you've got to have a mistake in it because it shows the love and everything i was like i'm keeping it in now it's irritated out of me but i've kept it in <laughs> and now i've got further on it's not so glaringly obvious to me but before i was just like and i made it a big thing in my head and i stopped knitting it and i don't know why i did that because i love it and I was obviously having a bad day when I was there, when I did that bit because I seem to have made a right jumble all the way through that line of the pattern. But it's okay. It's okay. My hair will cover it and I'm not I'm just gonna pretend it's not there. <laughs> so see if you can spot it, but you know. It's so pretty. I've got so far with it. So far. I'm really happy with it. Apart from that little tiny area, which is but you know, I'm I'm not I'm not going to I'm 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 not I'm not un, I'm not unraveling. I'm not doing it. But oh she's getting big. She's getting big. Look at that. It's also now big enough for my cat to enjoy when I'm knitting. <laughs> I was knitting it yesterday like this. Like just laying, chilling, watching I was watching Bleak House, which was very bleak, but really good. Um I think it was a BBC one really interesting it had uh the lannister dude that got shot on the toilet on it and he was really evil in it again he seems he seems to like playing characters that get um i'm not spoiling it for you but it was good adaptation if you like uh charles dickens which i was not keen on, i never thought i was keen on but i really enjoyed this so i'll try some other ones anyway i digress so golden horse shawl yes i was <laughs> i was knitting and my cat just went and owned it so I can see me fighting with him for the shawl so it has poppet approval there we go anyway got more shawl Nicole's beautiful pattern I will link it down downstairs I need coffee I haven't had a coffee yet where is my coffee <laughs> I feel like I've had 20 coffees but I actually need I need some sugar I think because I'm going 100 miles an hour yeah so absolutely stunning if you didn't know this and you haven't watched previous podcasts this shawl is inspired by the golden hall in the lord of the rings trilogy of rohan and i will put a picture up but it has the most delicious cable at the end so you have these cables that just keep going all the way through and then absolutely delicious cable at the bottom so this is actually my first proper cable job. So for my first time cabling, I don't think I'm doing a bad job. So if you weren't aware, this, this project I'm punching because <laughs> it's my first cable. Only I would choose something so difficult for my first cable project. But you know, never mind. It's taken me a little while to get into it, but now I'm into it. I love it and it's such a nice pattern i'm loving doing it is it moss stitch is it moss stitch seed stitch one of those <laughs> i really should know this never mind anyway loving it loving it 
and yeah so i'll link it and nicole has some beautiful short another beautiful beautiful shawl coming is it coming out or has it been released uh, well which is inspired by thorin which thorin oakenshield and oh my goodness she's knitted it in this beautiful slate gray the cabling they kind of they kind of hexagon oh, just delicious just delicious so check it out uh the wool i should talk about the wool i'm using uh yeah so it is a woolly knit cone if you're not aware of woolly knit and you're in the uk check them out um purely because this is a 500 gram cone it's merino inca gold it's cost me around 20 quid yeah 500 grams i think it's around 2500 meters don't quote me on that i'm going from memory my memory is a bit poop uh but yeah perfect for a massive shawl project so if you're planning on doing a shawl project and a bit worried about the yardage and the price get a woolly knit cone it's really good it's re like it's not the softest yarn in the world but it's grippy and it's really good for cable it like cables are coming out beautifully in it and also when it slips off your needles it don't go anywhere which is nice <laughs> after after working with merino for so much which is a slippy yarn and also my cashmere alpaca is slippy it's nice to have something with a bit of grip <laughs> gosh okay let's move on from that uh, but absolutely stunning um i'm probably gonna need some more of that today because i'm loving it um also i want to get it done before it gets cold because that is my winter protection and I need it. I need it in my life. Okay, next. It's going to shock the, the regular viewers what I'm knitting next. Because <laughs> I've been talking about this one for a while. And... Uh, I'm really happy with it. Um, it's currently on hold because I was silly. I thought I I did it whilst I was tired and I decided to do a little bit more stockinette than colour work in between the repeats and it didn't work. I didn't like it. And of course, Caitlin Hunter knows best. So who am I to muck around with it? Anyway, I digress. I have been knitting the ghost horse and it's delicious i've done all the horses this is my first like yoke type jumper as well so i'm quite happy with what's going on uh it needs blocking but i haven't tried it on yet either i've only just put it on the older uh, holdy thing so maybe i should put it on i could do that couldn't i no i've, I've split for sleeves that'd be ridiculous don't do that sam <laughs> yes, yeah, so I've split the sleeves and I'm starting the main body colour work, which is less intensive than the top. Uh, the top was quite... It, it's not a repeaty pattern when you get to the horses, so it takes a lot of concentration. And yeah. <laughs> My brain must ride. So I think that's what why... I started doing more stockinette than colour work because I was getting tired of doing colour work. So I need to take a break from this. Hence the golden shawl steps back in, saves the day. And I can get that finished and then head back to Ghost, Ghost Hall Town. Ghost Hall? Getting confused. Ghost Horse Town. But isn't she pretty? Isn't she pretty? Now what am I using? Okay. I'm using Adventures in Yarncraft. Undyed which is one of my favourite bases. It's Luxock and it's a stunner. It's just so soft and cosy. And then the variegated combination. I don't know if you, I don't know if I want to show you because the colour works quite hit and miss in places, but I am using pigment and ply and I'm using a season of Gaia sock set. So I, I did a, like a, not seen it just in the inspiration ordered it like months ago came got six mini skeins um 
three were variegated, three were solid. So I love this light green and this variegated light green. And then it's going into a like a mossy, mossy sage green. And what else have we got here? It did another variegated mossy kind of style. And then the next one is this beautiful one. And then it ends on a chestnutty brown. So that is my colour work. Hopefully I've got enough yarn. Hopefully. We'll soon see. <laughs> I have got more of the mossy green. Do not panic. Because I've unwound just before this podcast. Because I didn't want you to see the car crash. That was the colour work at the bottom. And now I've got a big pile of yarn vomit that I need to sort out after the podcast. Uh, yeah, so Caitlin Hunter, Ghost Horse, loving it, love the pattern. I'm probably going to wear this to death when it's done, but I just need a break from the colour work because a lot of it's it's full colour work. It's not colour work sleeves, colour work, it, this is where the sleeves stop. It's just like a little bit of ribbon, done. But full colour work is a commitment. And this has taken me ages. It's a lot, lot of hours in that. So yeah, I'm not the quickest colour work knitter. I just needed to have something fresh, but I'm loving it. I'm really loving it. I just need to, need to have a little nap from it for a bit. So that's that one. Sorry about that. I need to put my coffee order in. I thought I already placed it, but uh, somebody was uh, chilling. <laughs> coffee, please. Anyway. Next, next whip. Okay, a little bit of a story. Get more. So, a couple of months ago, or was it a couple of months ago? A couple of months ago, I ordered a Little Women mini skein set from Skein and the Stitch. Skein and the Stitch. And it's variegated and beautiful, and it arrived, and I loved it, and I was just like, dang. I should have got bigger skeins. This is too pretty. I was originally thinking doing ghost horse with this one. And I was like, no, this is too pretty. It's too pretty. It it needs, I need more of it and it needs to sing. And I put it away and I thought about it. And, you know, waiting for the inspiration. Oh, it's a dove. Uh, sorry. Uh, squirrel. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I put it away, thought about it. I tend to do that. I tend to buy the yarn first, then think about what I'm going to do with it most of the time. And I, f I saw a pattern. And I've been wanting to knit this per one of these pat person's patterns for a while, but I wasn't sure which one. And it finally clicked. So it's The Rose by Andrea Maori. I just thought it looked like a hug and I see the little women's story for me is very much sisterly family love hug being at home cuddly you know that kind of vibe and yeah so I swatched before it and hang on get this swatch it's only a tiny swatch because I've unraveled the big swatch. So and I did I did my big swatch. And coffee and a pig! Sorry, that's your daughter, so I thought you were filming. I was filming, but I still need coffee, my darling. Oh I think I went to I'll put it there because I'm worried it's too hot. Okay. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're filming now? Yeah. Why are you? No, I didn't realise that. Oh, shit. <laughs> you want to close the door? <laughs> Hello, Peek. Mm -hmm. So this is the shawl stealer. Where are you going? And he's gone. <laughs> I was just going to sit there. Okay, so where did I get to? I was showing you a swatch. Yeah, so I swatched it. I loved it. 
but it's something uh, it's they're meant to go together but the way I wanted to make them go together for the rose because the rose if you have I'll show you a picture is very much faded and fade into each other and I thought it would work well but it was still a bit jarry the fade so I just what do you think you like it you like the swatch <laughs> you like the swatch I held it with some alpaca silk drops yeah that's the one oh, it's just gonna start mischief in me hemming now I'm sure and it just I haven't even shown you the yarn yet and it's just really lovely subtle fade now so really love that I will show you the yarn itself I have started knitting it so okay so let's find the yarn I'll show you. <laughs> okay sorry I'm all over the place with this because it is a little bit all over the place in a couple of weeks it's my birthday and I asked my husband if he'd buy me the little women yarn for my birthday and he has done so and it's arrived and I, now I'm like I want to knit it but I've only got mini skeins and I don't want to use the big skeins because I'm being a good girl and I'm not opening my present before my birthday you know I don't know why but I'm just like he, but he's not hidden it I've got it here <laughs> So these are my big skeins. So there's a set of six. But I've got three. I've got another one on the way. But I'll tell you why in a minute. Oh, I should have taken this out of the bag before, but I haven't even taken it out of the bag myself. Okay, so we have got Meg, which is absolutely stunning. If you go on her website, she still has some there. But do you see why I say it's quite fady? This one is Beth. Chronic illness Beth. Love her. And Amy. So these are my three main colours. I've also ordered a large Joe. It's not here yet. I only did it yesterday. But I made a boo-boo. But it's fine. Beth's, Beth's going to be in the picture. It's fine. Uh, I also have eesh, Laurie. What are you doing, Laurie? Oh, ironically, he's attached to Amy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> why? Okay, that's terrible. I've got them all in a little bag and this one's just decided to unravel itself. Men, hey? So this is Laurie. And I've also got Joe. This is Joe. And I've got a mommy. So my original plan was to hold mommy, uh, Amy and Meg and just use these three colours. But then mommy sold out, which is understandable because she's stunning. And then... I rethought about it and I was like, actually, I'd quite like to use all of them just because you can't have one character without the other. So that is my plan. I don't get to hear. Sorry, brain fog. Okay. And then I've decided to possibly, if I need to, towards the middle, I will hold a little bit of Woolly Knits Plata Merino because it goes quite nice and it means I don't have to buy another skein because I've already got quite a lot of yarn going on here and then whatever leftovers I have I'm thinking I might make an heirloom cardigan so that would be good for the patchwork so that's my original idea anyway I'll show you what I've done I haven't done a huge amount because one I kind of want to leave it till September because I don't want to break into these puppies yet but I also couldn't wait so ignore the stitch markers that's where I've made a boo-boo and dropped a stitch because I'm holding it double I didn't realize I dropped a stitch and yeah silly billy 
so oh, it's so pretty you can see how it just fades really nicely together I've got four colors in here and you wouldn't notice you wouldn't think so but yeah if I'd knitted it solid without the mohair it was quite jarring in places so which they look lovely together like this but as soon as I knitted them up they look quite jarring so so it's just a beautiful cable it's knitted flat and then it's mattress stitched afterwards so this is one part of the sleeve and then it goes up into the body and then you knit it into quarters and then mattress stitch so I'm really enjoying knitting it it's quite a nice enjoyable knit um she says it's really complicated and there's lots of stages all together but the way that she's I can't really show you it but the way that she's written the pattern it's very easy to follow and I'm just tick it it's like line by line row, row by row row by row and I just tick off the row that I've done so it's quite easy to follow that way um yes yeah, so I'm really enjoying it and it's a little bit of birthday present to myself now the reason I've ordered Joe is I didn't think what I was doing I thought I'd start with Joe because that was the one that was a little bit less like the other ones which is understandable because she's a little bit like that in the story and where it starts it doesn't start with ribbing and I don't even think about it I just thought oh, that's the start I'll start with Joe forgetting that in the pattern it has about four inches of ribbing here <laughs> and because I'm starting with Joe. I needed way more and I only had a 20 gram mini skein of Joe, which worked, worked fine if that was the end of the sleeve, but it's not. <laughs> so I've got more Joe coming. Otherwise I'd have to unravel all this and I was just like, for my birthday, I'll get myself some Joe. And I really love the Joe yarn. It's, I wasn't not using lots of it because I didn't love it. It's just, it didn't work great with the fade, but you know what? I think it'll look nice just because the, I'll show you the drops I'm using drops alpaca silk in light beige so all good and hood get it all sorted uh, I'm holding off knitting this I don't want to knit any more of it just yet what have I done to that cable jeebus anyway <laughs> I love looking at my knitting because you can see where where I had brain fog and where I didn't. It's like a whole story of my day. <laughs> it's quite interesting. It's like, oh, I'm a really good knitter. And then, oh, brain fog. Oh, really good. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. So, yeah, I don't want to knit any more of it until I can officially open these for my birthday. Because I'm like that. That's the way I am. And plus I haven't got Joe, so I need to wait for Joe. But how beautiful is, is this yarn dial? Look. Oh. Just, like, it's just so lovely because they just flow really nicely together. And like so this one, how does it go? I remember. So Joe flows into Beth. Beth flows into... Laurie, Laurie flows into Amy, Amy flows into Meg, Meg flows into Mammy, Mammy flows into, no, Meg flows into Mammy, Mammy flows in, no, Amy flows in, <laughs> Amy flows into Mammy, Mammy flows into Meg, that's how it goes, so they they all got combinations of their colours flow through, oh god, that took some work, I apologise. I need my coffee. <laughs> oh. So, yeah. Also, I'm finding, adding the alpaca silk, it's a bit snugglier, it's a bit warmer, and it's a little bit more winter ready. <sighs> Got cat on the cup, which is appropriate. Sorry, I slurped there. I need coffee. Okay, right. What is next? I do have acquisitions, but they're book varieties. 
And uh, right, let's start with, oh, let's start with this one first. Okay. Uh, so I wanted to learn a bit more about uh, more traditional knitting styles of the UK and especially Fair Isle. And that, that sings to me. I love colour work and I love cables and stuff. So I love Aran knits. I, th I just love the traditional knitting. Um, Gamsies, love all that. And I just wanted to learn a bit more about them. Um, I'm doing a lot of, do I bring that in here? Hang on, I'm back. Yeah, so I'm doing a lot of learning about knitting. Whereas before I was just following patterns, now I want to learn the nitty gritty behind it and how to actually design patterns and things like that. Um, I am a little bit interested in designing patterns. I'm not quite there yet. But I do have some ideas and yeah so I'm reading I'm learning I'm learning more about the what's the word not just the techniques but the actual workings of knitting design so I've started to read up on that um so my first acquisition I brought was the Shetland Wool Inventors journal number four and i've only read a little bit of this yet but it's so good it, like, i love it i love the writing in this um hang on i'm letting the cat out you couldn't have gone out when the door was open you want your sausage good boy oh. anywho uh yes yeah, so i'm loving it I'm gonna I'm gonna subscribe to be honest um yeah so it is basically it's not just patterns uh they have <sighs> sorry I'm a bit flary I used a few spoons oh <sighs> getting up and down hey eh? uh yeah so it's got some beautiful photography in it knitting patterns walks interesting stories interviews recipes and personal insights into the lives of the Isles top knitters and craftspeople. So it is just a beautiful, beautiful magazine. I'd say book really. Um, and what can I tell you about this? So you do have patterns like this, I think six patterns in this one. Six patterns in this one. Um, I've got socks and there's a gorgeous, gorgeous vest, Storm Dennis vest. Sorry, I'm doing this a bit slow bit quick there you go um but what really what i really loved was um the first article i haven't read any more because i put this in here ready to film my podcast and i've been trying to film my podcast for a week so it's been ready and waiting but i, I i'm ready to read more of this uh, so i read an article about uh, the harsh reality of the shetland's historic knitting industry and i loved it so informative so informative i had no idea these women was freaking superheroes I, d I don't know how they did it they they worked on the crofts the farms doing their normal farm work and jobs carrying peat and stuff across these harsh islands whilst knitting whereas like we will knit and talk to people but do you knit and tend to animals do you knit and carry things many miles <sighs> and it just astounded me I thought, I thought just, wow wow so now i want to go to shetland islands uh, i'm not sure when not sure how not sure if it's possible but i would like to go and there's just so many really good articles in there there's one here about um the wall man oliver henry from jameson and smith and just oh, it's just really nice and there's some really nice because i keep stop saying really nice uh there's like recipes and just more books beautiful pictures oh, oh, look at that look at that scarf yeah so i'm really enjoying reading this and i might have to take this to the beach next time i go and just to chill and uh, yeah, so if you can get this, it's worth checking it out. 
It's a lovely read. It's not just patterns, but and you learn a bit more about the actual behind the scenes of the wool industry in the Shetlands and the island itself. Uh, get a bit more understanding of why the patterns are the way they are and all that kind of thing. So really happy about that. Sorry, I didn't mean to put that on a bag. Eesh. Oh. Next. What else have I brought? <coughs> These are all information books. So uh, the next one I brought was the Gamsey Knitting Source Book. So I'm loving, it's mainly like a, a swatch stitch dictionary kind of thing and information on how to make Gamsies and then there's some patterns at the back as well. Um, I've never knitted a Gamsie. I love the texture and the designs of them. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I don't want to show you the, the patterns, but I want to show you the stitches. So it's beautiful cables and yeah, so I can learn a bit, about, a bit more about stitches and pattern design and things like that. So sorry, I'm getting into the book now. <laughs> Um, I'm, I don't think I'll be able to knit a Gansey the traditional way, just purely because of my mobility, but I love the designs of them. And I'm wondering how I can incorporate that into my regular knitting uh, with circular needles, because there's no way I can use five needles. It's just not going to happen. I can't even do Magic Loop or DPN, so that's just not going to happen. <laughs> But I love the book and it's already inspiring me in lots of different ways. So worth the money on that one. And then the last one I brought, which I should have brought October, November last year. Yeah, when I first started knitting. If you're new to knitting, you need this book. OK, you need it. So it is. I finally got it. And it weighs a ton. The Vogue knitting book. If you don't have this book and you're pretty new to knitting, even if you are like an advanced knitter, it has everything in it. Everything. Literally everything. Um, yeah, so got basic techniques, all your stitches. Um, it has stitches that I've never used or even thought about using before. It has lace stitches, mosaic, mosaic knitting, um, stripes, how to read charts, catching floats, colour work, like the whole shebang, cables. Um, it's just like things that I don't think I'll ever use, like entrelac, bias knitting, entrelac which is where you do that, who knew? Um, but also, which I didn't know when I got it, but I'm so glad I did, was a big chapter on sock knitting as well. Definitely look at that. There's like how to, just how to knit everything. Like the basics of knitting hats, scarves, gloves. Um, what's this? Finishing, finishing things. Um, uh, as short row shaping, body shaping. Um, it goes into designing your own patterns. There's a huge chapter on designing your own sweater. And I didn't know that when I bought it and I'm so glad I did. And it goes through every single step you could possibly need to design your own stuff. So if you're planning on designing your own things or would like to try this book, this book's got everything. Um, it even has things that you can photocopy and use yourself, you know? So you have a knitting design worksheet. It goes through the, if you wanted to knit your own type of shawl, similar to Golden Hall, it shows you how to knit a triangle shawl. It's just Pleats, everything, buttonholes. If there's anything that you're like been a bit scared of, and it sounds 
really scary and you're like oh how do I even go about that and you go on the YouTube and you're a bit intimidated. I'm finding this easier than YouTube if, to find the likes. You know when you're knitting and you come across something in the pattern, you've knitted it before, you just need a little jog of your memory and open the book up, there it is, boop boop boop. It's, it's quicker than searching on Google, you know? Because you don't have to listen to people like me going on about their stitches. Uh, yeah, so Vogue Knitting, absolutely love it. I'm probably gonna get the condensed one as well, purely because this is a behemoth. It's huge, huge. And uh, there's a more condensed one for your knitting bag. Gonna get that, I mean, just um, at some point I'm gonna strain my wrist with this. He's like, it's huge. <laughs> that's what she said. And uh, yeah, so that's what I've got to show you. I didn't think I had that much, but I have loads of knitting, loads, just not many acquisitions because I showed you all those last time. Um, yeah, so uh, what else? What else? I do have some stuff to tell you anyway. So there was one thing that I wanted to do, which um, I'll go into a bit more detail probably next time. Um, and that is with regards to the rose cardigan and the little woman yarn. I would like to do a book club. I won't talk about it on here, like in detail, but I'm thinking of doing like a book club on Zoom or something like that where we can knit and chat about the book at the same time. Um, if you would like to join me, you're more than welcome. It's probably going to start in September. Maybe have a little bit of a knit along with it as well. If you wanted to, you can either you can knit whatever you like and read the book with me. It's fine. You can read it by an audio book. Um, if you are more inclined, you can watch the DVD and chat about it if you like, but there is probably going to be some story deviations if we do that. Um, but if you would like to chat books or stories, or you just want to be involved in it, it's like a, a Stitch and Bitch, but we're actually talking about a subject, join us. I just really like the idea of reading the book whilst knitting with the yarn, so I can get more emotionally connected to it. I'm already emotionally connected because I love the story and I know the story. I've read it. I've watched the films many times, but I just want to do it whilst I'm knitting it as well. So that's why I've held off of it as well because I kind of want, I want to share experience. And when I did um, a live, someone said, oh, what about book club? And I thought it was a brilliant idea. So I think that would be a really nice way of building a community, um, meeting other knitters, Again, you don't have to knit the rose cardigan whilst joining or even knitting with the Little Women yarn. But if you want to, I think they've still got some skeins left if you wanted to um, take advantage of that. Um, I'll put the link down below, but you can knit whatever you like. It's just, just a place to hang out, really. Um, so again, I'll start that at the beginning of September, I think. And yeah, I hope you like the idea of that. Um, Please like and subscribe if you love like my videos. <laughs> please, please. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting loads of views, but not many subscribers. So I, I know it's me, I forget to ask, but if you like my stuff and wanna stick around, please subscribe, like the video, comment, please. <laughs> I always forget to ask and then I'm like, nobody subscribes. And like, I don't talk about it. So nobody's gonna remember to do it. I've also started a Kofi. Now it's going to become a bigger thing, probably link with the book club and stuff like that and do other videos on there as well. But at the moment it's just a small Kofi thing. You can, you can do whatever you like with it. <laughs> I just got it started. Um, there'll be extra stuff on there soon, but I haven't done it yet. Um, but if you'd like to help support the channel, you're more than welcome to do whatever you like on there. Um, I'm not pressuring anyone you know it's just there um i'm gonna use it mainly to buy hand dyed yarns because i want to support the yarn dyeing community the indie yarn dyeing community and i don't want to use too much big brand yarn on this channel because i want to support the small business and we need to support them because times are tough 
and things are expensive and I tend to I don't tend to buy huge amounts of yarn apart from when I do a big project and it's my birthday so I'm putting my birthday money towards it whereas normally I buy one one skein maybe two skeins and I make something smaller from it or make mix it with other products that make it a bit cheaper or you know I did so if you wanted to help me support the local yarn communities and yarn dyers feel free to go on my coffee um and if you're wondering how i'm doing that i i knit with the indie yarn i show you what i've knitted with the indie yarn i talk about the indie yarn i go to yarn festivals and talk to the yarn dyers um I do interviews um i want to do a bit more of that in the future where i go either to the indie dyers home and chat to them there or i can go we can do it over zoom or something like that if i get a thousand subscribers i can start earning ad revenue which would be lovely and that can help me as well <laughs> oh time the lean out there and I, I totally get it but if you want to help the community in other ways just subscribe I know there's a lot of podcasts out there. It, there seems to be a massive influx of podcasts at the moment. Everyone got the same idea when I did as well. I know there was lots of podcasts before, but it just seemed like as soon as I launched, there was loads. <laughs> I was like, oh no, I'm going to get lost in the quagmire. But it's fine. I'll just keep doing my thing. Um, talking about new podcasts, have you watched Flannel, Flannel, Flannel and Pod? Is it called Flannel and Pod? Plod. Sorry. Fa Flannel and Pod launched yesterday? Friday. And I watched it this morning. Oh my goodness. He's adorable. 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 I, I love watching him on YouTube and now he's on, podca on podcasts. I'm done for. I'm done for. Just need Hal the cat to uh, have a cameo and, you know, life's complete. Oh, are you following the story of Hal? Oh, don't you just want to put that cat in the pocket? You're like, come on Hal, come on, come on, be friends, have a home, come on Hal. Please tell me you know what I'm going on about. Anyway, I digress. Um, yeah, so we have a video. We have a podcast. Um, I'm not sure how, I'm not sure if I'm going to go two weekly or carry on weekly just because my health's being a bit rubbish at the moment. If it's two weekly, I won't see you next week. If it's weekly, I will see you next week. But I think it's just going to be a hit and hope. And if I'm here, I'm here. If I'm not here, don't worry about me. I'll be here next week. So I, I seem to be doing it every other week at the moment. So maybe but we'll see how i go we'll see how we go oh okay right thank you so much for joining me if you're still here at the end i have waffled a lot i apologize don't quite know why i'm so i'm tired but also what's the word running at 100 miles an hour gotta love flares gotta love flares need to chill need to chill Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you have a lovely week. Hopefully, it should be a lovely sunny weekend this weekend. So if you are enjoying the sun and finally have got a summer, congratulations. And uh, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.